Hello and welcome to another Horse and Country How-To. My name's Howard Kirby. We're going to look at the subject of steadiness and what that means to gun dog training. Not just gun dogs, companion dogs too. It's as important for people with companion dogs as it is for people with gun dogs. So we need to talk about the subject of steadiness and what does it mean? Well, the subject of steadiness relates to simple things. Things like I'm doing now, I'm at a shoot, I'm opening the back of my car. It's absolutely essential that my dog just doesn't pile out the back and run around the car park and introduce him to everybody. He sat here patiently, expectantly. He desperately wants to be out because he wants to be part of what we're doing. Your dog at home needs the same thing. If we meet and greet people in the park, he needs to be calm around them. He mustn't just rush up and introduce himself to other people. Um, uh, when we're shooting, it's absolutely essential that he sits still throughout the shooting and only goes for retrieves that we send him for. So steadiness is gonna be a big part of the training we do, and we're gonna look at various methods and training uh, ideas that we can use to create that behavior. Okay, so here we are with little Brooke, our puppy. We're gonna go into the training center now and just have a look at how we actually start the steadiness going. Good boy, clever boy. And over here we've got Annie. Now, Annie's really doing it the way we don't want it done. What she's doing is she's overexciting the puppy. She's encouraging this little fella to jump up on her. Whilst it's great, everybody wants a puppy on their knee at this stage. When this fella gets to 25, maybe 30 kilos in weight and size, not only could he be dangerous, he could knock people over, uh, but also it's messy and dirty and all the things that come with that. We're gonna look at ways and techniques that we can discourage all this and make sure that he doesn't grow up with these behaviors in his mind. Okay, so we've shown really and truly how we shouldn't do a meet and greet. We want to do it differently to that. We're going to show you how we do it properly now. It's going to be part of the steadiness training, encouraging him to be nice and calm around people. So wiggle your fingers, Annie. Make him, engage him to start with. Okay, he's chewing, so he should move away. Move away and sit back down. Okay, so he's nibbling you, so now just take your hands away and stand up and disengage and give him nothing and then sit back down. And if and when he comes to her again, then um, he'll only get a response from us if he's polite. As soon as he's rough with his teeth or with his feet or with his body, we just disengage, stand up from him. So very quickly he learns, I get nothing out of this unless I'm really polite and just sit and um, be quiet around people. It's very simple, very straightforward, very gentle. Uh, and calm way to teach your puppy to be calm around other people. The tricky bit is teaching people to be calm around it. That's the real serious thing. And if you're in a family environment, it's worth spending time with the whole family and everybody or as many people as possible that interact with a puppy uh, to teach them to be the same around the puppy. And long term, you'll end up with the quiet, calm behavior we need. <laughs> Meet and greet is a really important part of our general steadiness training. What you'll see us do is you'll see a young dog and an advanced dog meet uh, in the park. What they must do is just sit patiently next to their handlers. Handlers may want to have a chat or exchange uh, politenesses and then um, could simply just move away. So the dogs never actually make contact. They get used to just sitting, minding their own business and then moving away and going on about their business. This is something we want to encourage for the park and for the shooting field. Teaching our dogs to meet and greet politely is a combination of the heel work we can do, the sit work, um, ensuring that when our dogs do meet other people and other dogs, that slowly but surely they get used to not interacting, to minding their own business and just being part of what we're doing and, and not including other people. So simple heel work, tough heel, good boy. Ensuring that he walks closely to us. Ensuring that when we stop, he stops, good boy. Ensuring that he's able to do the smallest of sit stays are just the beginnings of steadiness. We can make these things bigger and faster and much larger. Sit, good boy, clever boy. Gradually introducing him to walk, being off lead. Slowly but surely, good boy, clever boy, clever boy. And sit. Just some of the little training techniques that we're gonna to have to use if we're gonna get our dog to be able to do that lovely meet and greet. So, you've seen the processes we go through to get this lovely, steady dog. Keep training. Keep training.